Hello everyone, welcome to Piano Lessons with Elvin, episode 22. Just going to do a brief video on the order of sharps, um, which is very important for writing key signatures and even just comprehending them. This will be quite brief as it's not too hard of a concept. Um, I will see at the outset that the next video will be order of flats and then a video on the circle of fifths. All three of these methods all tackle the same idea of figuring out the key signatures and sort of the why. Why are certain things sharp? Why are things not sharp? All of that stuff. Um, I will assume that you know how to read both clefts. If not, I do have a prior video on that. But yeah, let's ju jump into it. So order of sharps in music, there's seven notes on the piano, you know, A, B, C, D, E, F, G. So there's seven notes that can be sharp. And this is the particular order they'll always occur in all the time, no ma matter what. F, C, G, D, A, E, B. I always memorize it as Fisigda Abe, um, which, you know, that's just what always helped me. There are some common little uh, acronym things, either fat cats go down alleys eating bread, or flies can go down an empty bottle. Uh, you know, so whatever works, I always like Fisigda Abe. And here's how they present themselves. So we have one sharp F, and one thing to point out, they always have to be aligned. When you have a song, you can't mix and match. You can't have a sharp here and then two sharps here. So, and you know, they present themselves differently because you read the clefts differently. But if there's one sharp, it always has to be F. So down the road, you'll, it almost becomes this thing where if you see three sharps, you almost don't even have to read what they are. You'll know they're F, C, G. It can't be combo. You can't have A, F, B. So that's one nice thing is, the num number of sharps will always be the same notes that are affected by it. So we have F, then we have F, C, F, C, G, F, C, G, D, F, C, G, D, A, F, C, G, D, A, E, F, C, G, D, A, E, B. And that gives us all seven there. Now, two things to point out is maybe, like, I get this idea of why is it in this order? Why is it F, C, G, D and not... F, D, C, G, A, you know, or A, C, G, D. It seems arbitrary at first, um, whatever, exposure to it. But if you understand the concepts of major scales and mi minor scales, which I have v videos on, and also when I do that video on cir circle of fifths, you'll see that this isn't arbitrary at, at all. It has to be this way. When you obey the rules of the formulas of major scales and mi minor scales, it will force you into this. If I'm starting on a G and I want to make a major scale, I'm forced into having an F sharp because of the whole, whole, half, whole, 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 half. If I'm starting on E and I'm doing a major scale, I'm forced to have F, C, G, D to, f to fit the formula. So it has to be this way. Now, the beautiful thing about music, why I view it almost as a transcendental language in many ways, is how beautiful these shapes end up being. When you do this order of sharps, which is forced to be the way because of the formula of scales, you get these very nice patterns. And the way you write it down is always, you start with one, you go down for the next one, up. And you see these nice shapes. So F, down a fourth, F, E, D, C, up a fifth, C, D, E, F, G, down a fourth, to D, G, F, E, D, F, down a fourth, C, up a fifth, to G, down a fourth to D. Now here we would go up a fifth to A, but here's why that doesn't happen. A would be a ledger line, and if we draw one in the middle of no nowhere, it's hard to tell what's happening, you know, if I just draw one here, you can't, it's just in no man's land, like what? what is that? So this is where they break the rule a bit to keep it on the staff, which is why it's, you know, down, up, down, down. Same with bass clef, down, up, down, down. Now, here's what's interesting is you could in bass clef still keep the pattern and have it go up, but for conformity's sake, they obey it. I did want to point out an example. In some old scores, you will see some composers write it out this way. And I have right here, um, this is from Brahms' second Ballad, which I'm not the biggest fan of Brahms. Sorry, Brahms. But this is the only time I've seen... Well, I've seen it a few times. But here, he's in five sharps. And here he breaks 
the rule, and you see he keeps F, C, G, D, A, and he goes up with both. I think in this context, he keeps it that way because both clefs are in base clef, so you don't have the issue of the lead ledger line. Because you see here, when he goes to treble clef, he conforms back to the regular way. The A goes down, but here, you know, the A goes up. Which, uh, the funny thing is, throughout this book, he writes in the key of B major quite often. In every other instance, he has the A's always down, except for this particular ballad. But just to point that out, this is very, very rare to see. Pretty much, you can just pretend it doesn't exist. Um, but, you know, it's fun to throw out those little, little fun facts, so that would be, if you want to be a nerd. Oh, well, you know, in Brahms' second ballad, he actually uses this more archaic method on bass clap. Blibbity blab. So then we got for the six sharps, F, C, G, D, A, E. F, C, G, D, A, E. And then the final one here for all seven, F, C, G, D, A, E, B. And you can see these really nice patterns, just this nice little zigzag kind of thing. So um, I will do the next video on order of flats, which is a little preview of just sharps in reverse. Once again, it's this beautiful language where everything fits together so much like a nice puzzle piece. Understanding scales forces you into the order of sharps, understanding circle of fifths. They're all kind of the same world because um, they're all just different um, ways to tackle the same issue. I did want to show nicer versions of how these key signatures look because my handwriting sucks. So here's like G major, you can see it with a one sharp. Here's D major, or well, B minor is D major, there's the two sharps. Here's what three sharps look like in a nice professional setting. Four sharps here, you see those nice shapes. Five sharps, note that the A's are down like they should be. Here we go to, oh, and then he does N harmonic, which let's not worry about all that stuff. But yeah, so the, here have just some nice uh, professional looking ways those key signatures are written here. But yeah, I hope that um, explains things. And if there's some stuff that you're not exactly sure of the why, at these beginning levels, sometimes I just say, don't ask why. If someone had to really explain all of the reasons for it, it's not really going to help you. To me, just obey. Fisig de Abe. Just know this is the order of sharps, and that's just how it is. And all, all of these questions you have end up being resolved because this is just the lang language of music. And once you get comfortable within that language, these questions become pretty irrelevant. Um, just like with a language, someone could say, you know, like, why is a word spelled a certain word? You know, like, why is phone with a P-H? Why isn't it F-O-N-E? That kind of stuff. And, you know, once you are used enough with the English language, those questions fall by the wayside. So, uh, yeah, uh, pre appreciate you guys. And next video will be on order of flats. Peace out.